being a tech dweeb, I get lots of questions about the software that I install on all my PCs. That, that, that's a lie. Nobody asks me that, but I wish they did because I actually have some pretty amazing opinions on the topic. There's a handful of applications that I install on basically every PC I have, and I have a good number of PCs. I can't escape them, even if I wanted to. They, uh, they, they won't l let me go. On almost every one of these PCs, I have a whole bunch of my favorite applications installed. Some of them change the way Windows looks and behaves, some are essential for my flow, some are utilities that I like to have on hand, and some are gaming specific. Because as you know, I like to play computer games from time to time. And maybe you're wondering what all these magical bits of software are. And if so, well, that, that's good, but because I'm, I'm going to show you. And if not, well, I mean, you've already made it nearly to the end of the intro, so you, know, you might as well stick around to see what's next. You never know. You might learn something. Probably not, though. I'll try not to blather on about each of these more than I need to. The very first piece of software I always install is Google Chrome. I, I mean, I, I, can't, I just can't with Edge. I'm sure it's a fine browser, but there's something icky about how desperate Microsoft is for you to use Edge. Google Chrome is my browser. I like it. I have it on all my devices and all my Android doodads, all synced up, and I'll, I'll be sticking with that until Google turns evil. I, I mean, I mean, more evil. However, as a big famous content creator, I get lots of attempts by scammers and hackers to steal my crap. Like a fake emails full of malware and browser token stealers and all sorts of nasty stuff. So one way that I've attempted to combat this is to never click a link in any email I ever get. And if I need to follow a link for something that gets sent to me, I use a completely different browser that I'm not logged in with, so uh, no, no tokens to steal. And for that, I use the Brave browser, just for looking at the links I get sent. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but I've seen it too many times. Channels get taken over and it's a nightmare to get them back. So this is just one of the ways that I'm trying to prevent that. And if there's any hackers or scammers listening to this video, I have one thing to say to you. You are not nice. That's right, I said it. You have to live with that now. Very often when I show my recorded desktop, you'll see that my Windows taskbar is not where it should be. Looky there, it's, uh, it's on the, the right side of the screen. And also I have these extra icons in there. What wizardry is this? Well, it's not wizardry. It's done with a program called Explorer Patcher. I've used this for ages, ever since Windows 11 came along, and it has drastically improved the experience to remove some of the Windows 11 restrictions. It has a ton of options for things that you can tweak with the taskbar and the start menu, Windows Explorer, Windows, and, and the right-click menu. And yeah, it unlocks the taskbar, so you can move the taskbar to the side of the screen the same way you could in Windows 10. And the way that I have these icons here is just, just some custom toolbars I made. You can make your own right there in the taskbar, and you can put the toolbars there and remove the text and change the size of the icons. Super convenient to have your most used stuff always there, ready for a clicking. So for those of you who ask me how I do this, that's how. Explorer Patcher. One little annoyance for me is the rounded corners in Windows. I, I, don't, I don't like rounded corners. Call me picky if you want, but as a design nerd, this, this specific style of rounded corners used by Windows 11 is super unappealing to me and it makes it look cheesy and dated. My visual sensibilities are much more in line with the crisp, square, geometric visual language of Windows 10, the Metro design language. So th there's this quick little script that I run called Win11 Disabled Rounded Corners. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's what it does. It is what it claims. Run that and it removes the rounded corners, which is great for the squares amongst us who get nervous when edges don't meet at crisp right angles. Another basically essential tool that I use all the freaking time is folder size. Because Windows doesn't tell you the size of folders when you're viewing multiple folders. So you have to manually check each folder. And you can't arrange the folders by size. It does it for files, but not folders, and it makes managing your files uh, annoying and dumb. You can fix that with folder size. It, it's just a program that you can run, and when it's running, when you open a folder, a separate window opens off to the side and it calculates the size of all the subfolders. It might take a few seconds to a, a minute, uh, depending on what it has to calculate, but it's a heck of a lot easier than doing it manually. 
You can also sort the folders by size. This is basically essential functionality that is missing in Windows, and this program is weird and janky. It's ugly. You sometimes have to turn it off and on to get it to work. I only enable it when I actually need to see what's in the folders, but I mean, compared to not having any way to view the sizes of a bunch of folders at once, it's a godsend. I install this right away on every PC I, I touch. Next up is OBS, Open Broadcaster Studio which is a uh, recording software. OBS can record all sorts of stuff, like your screen or multiple screens. You can set up the video size however you want. You can set up different recording profiles and do overlays. And you can even set up virtual cameras so you can control exactly the output of your camera source. You can apply filters for the video and the audio. It, it's packed with features, but I use it for two things mostly. I'll use it for recording gameplay whenever I need to do that on the device itself. But the main thing I use it for is my YouTube videos. I use this capture card, which is the Cloner Alliance Flint external USB capture card. And I plug my HDMI in there and my video uh, comes through there from my camera. And I use OBS to record my footage. Speaking of which, this is my current filming PC, but maybe not for long because this is a new PC that I've been tinkering with and it might be my new filming PC. Maybe, we'll see. It's an Asus pre-built PC. It's the ROG Strix G16 CHR. I showed it off in that RTX 4070 Super video review that I did recently. It's got a i7-14700F and 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage and an RTX 4070 Super, obviously. But I want to do some upgrades. Um, the motherboard in here is kind of basic. Uh, it's decent for gaming, but it's not ideal for CPU intensive workloads. I'm planning to swap that and uh, maybe the, the probably the cooler too, and then maybe even the case, depending on how spicy I'm feeling. Right now, I'm going to do two quick upgrades and take you along for the ride. Team Group was going to send over some stuff for my last video about this PC, but it, it turned out it wouldn't arrive on time. However, they still sent the stuff, and since they were nice enough to send it, I wanted to show you what I got. First, we have two 32 gigabyte kits of Extreme ARGB DDR5 RAM clocked at 7200 megahertz. That's 64 gigabytes total, if I'm not correctly mistaken. And it's RGB, obviously, so it'll make you better at video games. They also sent a 2 terabyte T-Force Z540 SSD, and that's perfect. I, I like to have a good size SSD for my active video projects that I have on the go, something separate from my main system drive. And this SSD can read and write at up to 12 gigabytes per second, and it comes with a five-year warranty. And I installed it all, and it worked like a charm. Did it make me a better gamer or content creator? Uh, probably. Will it do the same for you? Well, I don't know. So thank you Team Group for sending this, and if you want any of this stuff, I'll include some links in the thingy below. Sort of related to capturing video, I install VLC as my media player. OBS exports MKV or MP4 files, and VLC handles both of those. And VLC can actually do file conversions right there in, in the program. This program is, is so good and lightweight and efficient and just perfectly compatible with everything you throw at it. It, it makes sense just to install it by default on every PC, like I do. These next few softwares are for the emulation nerds amongst you otherwise known as my people. This is the program I use to format SD cards and also flash images. It's called Rufus, which always makes me think of Rufus from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Using this, you can format your card and even use FAT32 on larger cards, which lots of handhelds need, and you can't do that in Windows by default for some reason. If you download images for custom OSs, then you can use Rufus to flash those images. There's other programs for flashing, but Rufus is the one that I default to. It's a feature rich, but ultimately pretty simple and straightforward. If you need a tool for managing partitions on your SD cards or even the drives on your PC, Mini Tool Partition Wizard Free Edition is the one you want. You can delete and resize partitions, format any partition to any file system, assign drive letters, basically all the stuff that's a pain in the buns in Windows disk management, Minitool does it better. Considering how much tinkering with disks and formatting I do, this is a piece of software I can't live without. Next up, uh, th this one isn't free. It's, it's the one paid app in this whole video, but it's a pretty cool tool if you need what it does. It's called Linux File Systems for Windows by Paragon Software. This is just a little program that adds support for EXT4 partitions. So you know, you know those systems that you can't add games to in Windows normally? You can if you use this. That's it. That's, that's all it does. It just it gives you access to Linux drives that you ordinarily wouldn't have access to in Windows. Pretty straightforward, but pretty darn useful. 
Those who know me well know that I like to play the occasional computer game, and I found a really cool program that is great for downloading and playing computer games. It's called Steam. Maybe you've heard of it. Honestly, what can I say about this one? It's, it, this is among the very first things I install on every computer. This and Google Chrome, I usually download them both at once right away. Because 96.4% of the time I have a computer, I'm, I'm going to be playing games on it. When I log in, if it's a big badass gaming PC, I might start downloading some games or maybe I'll bring over my Steam games drive, which is this Zyk USB 4 NVMe enclosure with a 4 terabyte NVMe drive in it. Or if it's a lower powered machine, I'll, I'll probably just start downloading a ton of indie games. The main program that I use for retro emulation is Retrobat, and this one is so quick and easy to install that I just end up installing it on most devices, if not all of them. Retrobat is like a Windows version of Botocera, so it's a, it's a front end for browsing your games and it also comes with all the most important emulators, and for the ones it doesn't come with, it can download those on the fly as needed. You can install this and add your games and BIOS files to the, to the folders it makes, and uh, yeah, that's it. You, you can fire it up and start playing. You can also customize the boogers out of it. You can apply shaders and overlays to change the look of your games, all the performance and resolution options you can want at your fingertips. You can scrape your game art to make it look all pretty, sign into your Retro Achievements account, and of course, you can download the Techweeb theme. I made lots of videos about Retrobat, but most recently I made this video about playing retro games on a laptop, and I, I use Retrobat in that video, obviously. So, so check out that video if you want a complete tour and guide of how to get it up and running. Another retro gaming thing that I need in my life on every device is DOS games. And for that, I use my own customized version of DOSBox that I call Dweeb DOS. You can learn all about that in this video. It's basically just DOSBox staging, but with some, some hand-picked CRT overlays for you to choose from and a custom orange amber command prompt, some preset options that I think make the gaming experience better, and a bunch of useful bundled DOS apps. You can use this to load up your DOS games, old school style. It basically just feels like your PC has a hidden dusty DOS PC lurking inside it, ready to spring forth with the push of a button. And this is so dang lightweight that I just install it by default on every computer. I can't be without DOS, what can I say? I don't know if being addicted to DOS is an actual condition, but if it was, I I'm seriously, seriously sick, you guys. A few quick honorable mentions. These aren't softwares that I install on every PC, but they're all things that I install on any PC that I'm doing performance tweaking with. First is MSI Afterburner. This program is good for two things. You can use it to overclock or undervolt your GPU. I've made videos about that stuff and you can check those out if you want to. I do that on my main PC and my gaming PC in my living room, but I don't always uh, bother with that kind of stuff. However, if I need some statistics displayed, like if I'm benchmarking a game for performance for a video or whatever, and I need to see like the, the FPS and the usage and stuff, this is also what I use for that uh, to get my overlay. And you can check out this video if you want to know how that works. My hardware monitoring program of choice is HW Monitor. It's a lightweight program, fast and snappy to open. I love having this on basically every PC because it's just interesting to see what's happening, which components are drawing power, how much, which are running hot or cool. But it's also useful if you need to do troubleshooting or just monitoring the hardware during benchmarks or whatever. Speaking of which, Let's talk about my benchmark programs. Cinebench R23 is what I use for CPU testing, 3D Mark, which is for GPU and overall system testing, and Crystal Disk Mark, which is for SSD speed testing. Usually I will only install these if I'm doing a product review and I need benchmark numbers, or maybe I'll install them if, um, if, if I suspect there's performance issues on the device. I'll run these to see how the doodad does, which helps me know what might need tweaking. And that, that's it. That's, that's what I have for you today. These are the most common programs you'll find installed on every PC that I have, more or less. These are so freaking useful. And can, can we just take a moment to appreciate all this awesome free software that's out there for us? Pretty much anything you could want to do, there's, there's a good free option out there for you. Made by cool dweebs who just want you to have the tools you need. What a bunch of heroes. If you have any must-have software that you can't live without on all of your PCs, pretty please let me know in the comments below. I love learning about new fun tools that make my life easier. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, tickle the subscribe <laughs> button, and spank the bell so you don't miss any of my nonsense. And that's it from me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.